Hello my friends and fellow Vedsies. September is almost over, which means it's practically October, which means it's Halloween month. Now I love the creepy, the kooky, the mysterious, and the spooky, but I'm also a big old coward. So when I'm looking for Halloween media, I'm looking for things that are less creepy and more cozy and campy. And so I thought I would share some recommendations for those of us who aren't interested in horror because we still deserve to have a fun Halloween. Let's get started, shall we? Face Off. I am a huge fan of this show. My friend and I actually recently just finished our rewatch of all 13 seasons. This show was on the Sci-Fi Channel throughout the 2010s and was a reality competition show for special effects makeup artists. And since special effects makeup is very prominent in fantasy, horror, and sci-fi, it lines up really nicely with the Halloween vibes. Now, like I just said, horror is featured on the show quite prominently. So if you are very squeamish, probably not for you. However, I will say as someone who is very easy to scare, getting to see the process of creating the creature and focusing on how it's made really helps mitigate the scares. Like, sure, it's a zombie, and it's covered in entrails, but also, that's just Kristoff, and the paint job is pretty muddy anyways. The show is a lot of fun, and this time of year especially, it's cool to see how the monsters are made. The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. This book is just dripping in sweet witchy goodness. It follows a witch named Mika Moon who is incredibly isolated because all witches are orphans, and also witches cannot congregate because it is too dangerous to let the magic flow freely. But when she's contacted by caretakers of three young witches, asking her to teach these girls how to control their powers, it challenges everything she knows about community and love. It is so sweet and so twee, as the British say, and is referenced in this book. It is just sweet and cozy, very much in the Bewitched or Bedknobs and Broomsticks or Sabrina or Practical Magic brand of witchery, which I think is perfect for Halloween. Be more chill. I love this cheese fest. In this musical, we follow a teenager named Jeremy who ingests a supercomputer that gets implanted into his brain to teach him how to be popular. But when said computer proves to be more sinister than initially anticipated, Jeremy has to fight a foe who can literally control him. Show vibes like a Disney Channel original movie that was allowed to swear, which gives it a really fun and unique tone. And it's not scary, it's funny. The scariest things are a computer and a bunch of teenagers. However, it does have a Halloween party, so it definitely should count for this. Dimension 20, Misfits and Magic. Witches and wizards have always been linked closely to Halloween, and a certain book series written by a certain awful human being really intensified that link, especially between Halloween and magic academies. But since we have learned about said awful person being an awful person, going back to that series is much less comforting than it used to be. There's been this void left for those of us who want Magic Academy in our Halloween, but don't want to support that awful author. Luckily, Abria Iyengar has got our backs. This tabletop role-playing show follows four American teenagers who are sent across the pond to attend the British Magical Academy of Gao Penny. This show is such a delight. It is definitely a Harry Potter parody, but it does enough of its own thing that it is not just a Harry Potter parody, if that makes sense. It's doing its own thing and having its own themes beyond Harry Potter. And the characters, as well as the players, are immensely charming, so you are in for a great time. There are some darker elements to this story, I will say, because there is a dark wizard archetype character and a lot of horrific things happen to and around him. However, there are no visuals to back that up. At least in season one, uh, I wrote this script on the 23rd, season two premiered on the 25th, and as of when I'm filming this on the 30th, I have not watched the first episode yet, so please no spoilers! Animaniac spooky stuff. This is an incredibly specific pull, not gonna lie. 
this isn't just an episode of Animaniacs. This is a collection of segments on a VHS that I had as a child that I'm pretty sure is still somewhere in this house. If you don't have the specific tape, the episodes in question are Dracula, Dracula, Frank and Runt, Meeples, Sir Consequences, Hot Fathers and Bedeviled, Scare Happy Slappy, Which One, and the wiki insists that the Scottish play segment is on here, but I don't remember that being the case. Regardless, these are a bunch of hysterical Halloween-themed segments from one of the greatest cartoons of all time. It's not scary. It's just funny. And also, weirdly, one of the most quoted pieces of media in my immediate family. Headless. The Headless Horseman doesn't get as much play as a lot of the other classic monsters, but I think he's just dripping in Halloween vibes. And in this web series, there is magic and comedy and mystery abound as the Headless Horseman and his new roommate Ichabod have to uncover the mysteries of Sleepy Hollow. If you are a geeky musical internet type like myself, seeing John Cozart and Ginny D and Matt Mercer and all of these Tin Cambro Starcad people together was just mind-bogglingly absurd. But it's so much fun and is just so Halloween. Monster Prom. Listen, I am well aware that I am being a predictable bitch with this one. However, you cannot tell me that a monstrous high school dating sim isn't perfect for Halloween. If you're concerned about being squeamish, I will say that the text of the game includes a lot of horror elements, but the visuals relatively stay safe. But not safe for work, though. This game is incredibly horny. But if that doesn't bother you, Monster Prom is incredibly fun and funny and will help you get into the Halloween spirit with ease. Meet me in St. Louis. Talk about Tunnel with Flash, I know. A horny monster dating sim to a classic MGM movie musical. Drastically different vibes. Now, if you are aware of the reputation of Meet Me in St. Louis but haven't seen the film or it has been a while, you might be a bit confused because isn't this the Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas movie? Shouldn't this be a Christmas recommendation? And yeah, it is that too. I always watch this movie around Christmas. However, it's a story about the entire year, which means there is a Halloween segment and it is just dripping with wonderful autumnal spooky energy. And there is an innocence to it, you know, we're here in the 2020s looking at the 40s, looking at the turn of the century, and there's innocence and nostalgia abounds. And while I have to watch this movie in December, I start craving it sometime in September or October. Nerdy prudes must die. If we're going to talk about Halloween, slasher representation feels needed. And while eldritch beings aren't a must, they're certainly a nice touch. Luckily, Nerdy Prudes Must Die, a musical about a bunch of teens getting hunted down by a ghostly jock, is able to provide both for us. It is certainly scary, but it is not bloody or gory. And the fact that it is a filmed stage show helps ease a certain amount of the tension that is more present in film. Honestly, the scariest part isn't the murders, the ghost, or the Eldritch Entities, it's the Christian purity culture. Beacon Pines. Y'all, this is the coziest Halloween game I can imagine. And yes, it is horror, but it is cozy horror. The narrator of a storybook asks us to help find the perfect ending to her story about the small town of Beacon Pines. We follow a young boy named Luca as he discovers the sinister secrets of the many mysteries of the town. The art is gorgeous, the characters are all super memorable and engaging, but my favorite part is uncovering the mysteries with the branching mechanic. Because while there is technically a right path to a correct ending, you are rewarded by uncovering all of the different paths and you can't get to a success without a few failures first. As for how scary it is, you know how with cartoon violence we let kids watch things that you would never allow them to see in live action because it's fine and it's a cartoon and nobody really gets hurt? This is cartoon horror. Some of this would be really upsetting if it was humans or live action or fully animated, but because it is 
Anthro, it is animal characters, and because it is not fully animated, it is able to get away with a few things that ordinarily would be a bit more upsetting. Alrighty, so there we have it, some cozy, nerdy Halloween wrecks for us cowards. I hope I've introduced you guys to something new you can enjoy, and if you try any of these out, I hope you like them and I hope you tell me. And if you have any spooky media you think I'd enjoy, please let me know. And with that, my friends and fellow Fedsies, I will see you tomorrow for the wrap up.